So, uh, anyway, Jeepers Creepers Axe. Well, I drew a basic template on uh, some construction paper and I cut it all to shit because uh, I ended up making a couple different templates on different sizes of wood. And uh, I found a scrap piece of wood that was uh, three quarter inch. So this would be perfect for our Jeepers Creepers blade. Um, I actually have an old axe handle that used to have one of my Viking axes on it. Um, and I decided to change the handle uh, with some stronger wood. So uh, I ended up keeping this because I'm a pack rat when it comes to projects. And uh, I wanted to hang on to it. And it turns out it's the perfect size for my Jeepers Creepers uh, fake axe. So anywho, uh, three quarter inch plywood. That's all it is. You can see the layers. It's just shitty plywood. That's all. And it was painted green. Um, I'm going to paint this thing black and weather it so color doesn't matter. Um, I took a, an angle grinder, four and a half inch, and I uh, used it on the wood and gave it a nice bevel, okay? So, uh, nothing super sharp here, um, and I'm gonna sand it all down before I spray paint it anyway. Uh, so, you know, all this rough, all these rough cuts and everything, not gonna be a big deal. He's got three spikes that stick off the back, just like that, and I'm using uh, old dowels from uh, Broken Arrows that I've kept um, after 3D archery. And I'm just using these for my spikes. So I have three holes drilled there, and I'll kind of sharpen them. You know, give them. I'll give them an, a point, but nothing actually sharp, uh, since this is for a haunted house, and I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, I wanted something a little more durable than foam because I want to have this over the years, and uh, you know, blah blah blah. So anyway, I got a skull saw over here, and. Uh, that's all I use to cut this out. Super easy. You can use a jigsaw with three quarter inch. Jigsaw tends to not cut perfectly 90, so uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So with a jigsaw, unless you've got like a really, really good one, um, all the jigsaws I've ever owned have, have cut a little canted, um, especially in the thicker wood. So um, leave a little bit of like, kind of like a seam allowance when you sew, kind of the same with that. Give a little bit of allowance when you cut and you can always file it down or grind it or whatever you need to do. Uh, but wood grinds really fast. I did this bevel in literally like two minutes, maybe less. So really easy. Um, you can find pictures of his axe online. I drew the very basic design. Very, very simple. So there it is. Then I drew a pilot hole with an eighth inch drill bit. Then I went up to a quarter inch drill bit. And then I finally went to a three eighths drill bit. And that's what I'm using there for this axe. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take one of my pieces of broken arrow that I've pre-measured and did a dry fit already. So I drilled it as far as the drill bit would go. Then I did the same to the ax handle and it's gonna go together just like that. And I'm gonna hit it with some wood glue and weight it down, clamp it, and that'll be my Jeepers Creepers ax. Uh, after which I will sand, add three dowels right there for the spikes and uh, we'll bring to kind of a point. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video there and uh, let me show you uh, the next step. Thanks. Welcome to part two of the Jeepers Creepers Axe. Uh, so I've got it all assembled and I, it got to dry overnight with all the wood glue and everything like that. So uh, let me show you what I did to it. Uh, still a three quarter inch plywood. I've assembled it with the dowels uh, on the inside with the handle. I ground the handle uh, down here to meet the axe plywood, if you can see that, it kind of bevels, and then I reinforced it with these little blocks here with some screws through it. I wasn't super happy with just a dowel holding it together, and honestly, it's going to be dark and, and spooky in the haunted house or whatever. I, you know, I'm not really worried about those two blocks. Uh, I just want to get the basic shape. So I've given it two coats of black spray paint. Uh, the first coat was regular black Rust-Oleum. Uh, flat black. I, I always get flat black. Um, the whole thing is you need to get the wood to absorb a lot of paint before you put a finish on it. So that's what this did. Um, dulled it down, got a bunch of paint into the wood grain, and made it possible for the top coat, which is this Rust-Oleum hammered. Uh, it's a textured finish, and it's really hard to see on the cap but it gives a very, very subtle um, kind of like patinaed metal um, finish on it. You know, I, I don't really know how to describe it. It's, it's very slight. So when you actually look at the ax head, if you can see that there's little tiny, 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 tiny divots in it. And 
when I go to dry brush this thing with silver paint, all those little divots are going to pick up and um, it'll give a real good three-dimensional effect. So uh, I'm about to paint it with the silver paint and uh, that'll be it for this axe. I'm not doing anything more to it. That's plenty for a costume axe and um, I'm really looking forward to uh, to getting this entire costume complete. So um, if you have any questions on this, it's really self-explanatory. Um, also, I added the bevel onto the spike at the top, just like I did to the blade. Um, and then there's the arrows right there that I used a pencil sharpener on and didn't bring it to a full point. Super easy. Um, the, you know, I don't mean to assault anybody's intelligence, but, you know, it's really, really, really simple. Um, and I know I say that a lot, but honestly, I'm nothing special. It's just you know, figure out how to make it work. So, um, <clears throat> there's that. I'm going to go ahead and go up and uh, get the silver paint and, uh, that'll be the next step.